guys welcome back to my channel and if you are new then welcome my name is Kirsten and I am a working mum of one in today's video I'm going to be sharing our experiences weaning Madison off her dummy Madison is nearly 20 months old and we now say that she is officially weaned off her dummy she's been weaned off for a few weeks now but we're now at that stage where we definitely say yep she's weaned off so I thought it was time that I made a video to talk about how we did it, our experience with it, and I guess share a few tips that might make it a bit easier. We found weaning Madison off the dummy quite easy. I was very much prepared for the fighting, the tantruming. I was just, I was really prepared for it to be awful essentially a lot of parents that I have spoken to when they have weaned their children it's been like awful and hard and if you are a parent you understand that when your child is upset it is like heartbreaking to see them upset and I envisioned that Madison was going to be upset come weaning and removal of the dummy Turns out I was quite wrong, but I think that has to do with the way that we approached weaning, the way that we did everything in regards to weaning. So I thought I would talk to you about how we did it and how I think the steps that we took definitely helped us. So we decided to wean Madison off the dummy at around 18 to 19 months. And that was mainly because we thought that one, we wanted to wean her off before we go on holiday just after her second birthday and I didn't want to be like halfway through weaning her and then we go on holiday and we then backtrack because we use a dummy on the plane or because it's easier when you're on holiday. So I really wanted to have her completely weaned off before then. Madison's at that age where she's learning to talk more and verbalize her language skills and to be honest, Madison wasn't talking as much as other kids. I totally get that all kids are different and you really shouldn't compare other kids, but I was doing a bit of that mum comparing and you know what? I found that she tried harder when she didn't have a dummy. So that was one thing that led to us wanting to wean her off the dummy. The third thing is that a lot of the parents I'd spoken to who'd weaned their child off their dummy were kids that were quite a bit older, sort of two and a half, three, three and a half. And our, I guess, goals or plans are to send Madison to three-year-old kindy and then obviously kindy. And Madison can't be having a dummy and it will impact her learning if she's got a dummy and she needs to learn to be independent and confident in herself. And I just don't think having a dummy really encourages that kind of behavior and learning and things like that so yes this time frame or age for us seemed like a good time to wean Madison off her dummy now I think picking the right time to wean your child off the dummy is really important I think you wouldn't want to be trying to overload your child with lots of different change one change at a time so you know things like if there's like you're about to go through a big change in your life like you're moving house or starting a new daycare or those kinds of changes I think will really affect how your child handles being weaned off their dummy so for us this was the perfect time because we didn't have any major life changes or any major changes that were going to affect Madison in the scheme of things to wean, be weaned off the dummy. So with weaning Madison off the dummy, we decided to take a gentler approach. We really didn't want her to be upset by it, especially as I'd read, they can form emotional attachments or they, it's likely that they have come 18 months. So, I wanted to be I didn't want to upset her I didn't want to didn't want to baby her but I didn't want to push her into something that she felt uncomfortable I wanted to make sure that she felt secure that she felt safe and that she was ready to do it in her own time so what we started doing is introducing another I guess thing 
I don't really know what to call it, uh, as a, a comforting mechanism. So we introduced this comforter. Lots of other kids have comforters, but we were happy for Madison to transfer her security needs or affections from her dummy to a comforter. We have two of these and they are in circulation together. So they smell similar, I guess. Like one isn't brand new in a box and one is pre-loved. So Madison is definitely warming up to these. Now that she's weaned, she's still not 100% on these and that's totally fine as well. But some days she's really attached to them and some days she's not. But in the beginning, she wasn't really any, and she didn't quite understand what we were doing, but we were trying to get her to use this for comfort. And she does now, she goes to bed with them, but she's having a nap right now and she doesn't have one. But overnight, she definitely has one of these. And I think that helps. Like we weren't pushing that and removing the dummy straight away. So when she was using them, we tried to get her to use them together. And then obviously as we started weaning the dummy, it came away. So in regards to weaning Madison, we took about four weeks. And I think that's longer than a lot of people take. I think a lot of people take three or four days. But we really eased Madison into it made for a less stressful environment there was no tantrums there was no tears it's just easier and calmer for everyone involved for us as parents and for madison it is a big change for her so we just decided to ease her into it so we started off with just taking it away from her during the day and she was only to have her for nap time because she has one nap and bedtime and that's it. And we did that for about a week. Now, one thing I can say is if you are a working mom or you have people who look after your child or your child's in daycare, get everyone who cares for your child on board. There's nothing worse than someone challenging what you're trying to do and undoing all your hard work especially if your child does object to fighting you know the weaning of the dummy so we told our daycare carers that you know we're trying to wean madison off so if you can try and minimize how much she has it you can give it to her at nap time if you would like but we would really prefer it if you didn't and our daycare were great um same with both my mum and my mother-in-law who look after Madison quite regularly. We got them on board. Both of them are pretty good anyway. They've been trying to ease Madison off it before we decided, yes, we're weaning, just because it's better for her to not have it and she doesn't really need it. She's not a baby anymore, she's a toddler. So that was really helpful. And that's what we did for at least the first week. We'd ask at daycare how she went and she was fine, same with both my mum and my mother-in-law. We definitely found that Madison did much better at in the care of others than more specifically with me. And I think it's because she could push me and challenge me in regards to obviously wanting the dummy. She asked for it a lot. We found that if she saw them, she asked for them. And that was the fuel for a tantrum she won't she wouldn't tantrum but it could escalate to one if we couldn't i guess regulate or disarm the situation so that is my that is also another tip that i have is if you are weaning you need to collect them all up and put them away so if you have a dummy that you're going to use for like bedtime or nap time or something like that then have that if you have one for daycare or wherever your child is going put it in the daycare bag but all the others i'm not saying get rid of them yet but put them somewhere out of sight of your child whether it's like in a little tupperware container in your pantry somewhere where you know where they are but the child can't see them because out of sight out of mind definitely works for this particular version of weaning so after about a week or so i asked how madison went at daycare and with obviously the grandparents and she actually went down for a nap without the dummies which i found very surprising we, and we also did a couple of odd nights 
without the dummy as in we just sort of didn't offer it to her at bedtime but that was all very short-lived because in the second week she definitely sort of started to clue on that the dummy was missing she would ask for it a bit more and we would just sort of respond with comments like no you don't need it you're a big girl now you know you're fine you don't need it and she would carry on which was great so battling nap time without a dummy now nap time without a dummy is quite a challenge because they're used to that comfort so we decided that we didn't want to let Madison cry it out that's just not a method we have ever really sort of applied in our parenting so that's just something we didn't want to do with a dummy especially when you're removing like the security blanket we just didn't want to do that to Madison so what we decided to do is we would give her a cuddle before bed to try and put her down and then try and settle her in her cot and that seemed to work for us we found that Madison became accustomed to that she would get a cuddle before nap time and before bedtime and then she would go down into her bed and that was totally fine I know lots of people will sort of be saying well you're just replacing one one I guess vice with another with the cuddling to sleep or cuddling and we didn't always cuddle her to sleep and to be honest the majority of the time we'd only cuddle her for five minutes because she became accustomed to she just get that that security fix that she needed just to feel safe and then we would put her in her bed of course there were some grizzles probably not tears but there was some grizzling and the occasional uh you know standing up in her cot saying you know I don't want to go to bed but you know you just tell we just tell Madison to calm down and that there's no need to cry and we help her lie back down and you know she might she might need you know me to stand at the end of her cot for five minutes as she just settles in and sometimes she'll get into her cot without it but my tip is to focus on one thing at a time so make sure that you probably target their napping first and then the overnight sleep. Overnight sleep is a lot harder because it's just, it just is. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it, it just is. It just, it's just harder. So we probably only master, it probably took us about two weeks to master daytime naps, to be honest. Daycare and the grandparents, no problems with naps but mum and dad at home it took us about two weeks so it took us about two weeks to get Madison um, sort of settled into not needing a dummy at nap time and then we moved on to bedtime as I mentioned earlier it's a good idea not to overload your child with change so Madison up until recently has been having a bottle of milk um, before bed and I had planned to wean her off once we had successfully weaned her from the dummy. So she still had the milk as a little bit of a comfort. It's not necessarily a sleep association because she's never really had milk with her naps. It's more of a bedtime thing, a dietary requirement, I guess, for her. And that's when she's been having it. So we noticed that about two or three weeks into weaning her off the dummy, Madison started objecting to having milk at bedtime. And ideally, I would say don't wean them off two things at once because it's just a bit much for them to handle. But Madison had decided that she wasn't interested in her milk at bedtime anymore. She's happy to have it at any other time of the day, but she's not interested at bedtime anymore. So we actually ended up weaning her off milk and her dummy in succession or together, I guess. And that wasn't planned and I probably wouldn't recommend it and I probably wouldn't do it for my next child either but Madison self weaned off one thing and we were obviously actively weaning her off another so that's how that worked when it comes to weaning I think you need to take your time I don't think rushing it is a good idea for small children they like to be able to anticipate things which is why routine is really important and I think you need to ease into the change to make it more comfortable for them and I think that's definitely helped with us weaning Madison off her dummy 
yes it took us four weeks and for some parents it will only take four days but for us we had no tears we had no tantrums and Madison seems to be happy without it in actual fact Madison saw a dummy today that was on Ryan's bedside table and she just pointed at it and said dummy and I said oh yep that's what that is you don't need one though and she was fine she could have reached it and put it in her mouth but she didn't and I think that is a sign that she was weaned at the right time we also noticed that in the times where we were weaning her off and she had either found one or she'd have one overnight that she would be giving it to us like giving it back to us when she was done with it so that was also another thing that sort of indicated to us that she was ready you will know when your child is ready to be weaned off or if there is a right time for you to wean your child off their dummy I definitely noticed a massive improvement in Madison's speech when we started weaning her off her dummy. Of course she doesn't speak as well or as many words as other kids but that's okay. The fact that I saw a drastic improvement after her weaning was just amazing and it obviously you know gave me the outcome that I wanted. I wanted her to be weaned off her dummy and not dependent on it and obviously it improved her speech immensely. So yeah that's sort of what I that's sort of our experience with weaning Madison off the dummy so my top tips are get everyone involved and on the same page regarding weaning so that's other carers daycare family husbands wives whoever is involved in your child's upbringing make sure that they are on board as well take your time with it choose a time that is you know good that your child isn't going to be going through any other major change or you're going through major change that's going to limit your commitment to this that is the other thing is just committing to it don't do it at a time where you're likely to cave and give them the dummy because it's easier or it's convenient i know for a lot of people that is really difficult but i definitely noticed after about a week i realized that i was giving madison the dummy more than she needed it and you realize and that's quite amazing in itself so i think i've like talked about this topic heaps already if you have any other questions about weaning a toddler off a dummy in a more gentler approach leave a comment down below i'm happy to answer any questions we found this really successful and yeah hopefully weaning your toddlers off their dummies or babies off their dummies is um easy for you it was easy for us and i'm an advocate out here that's telling you that it doesn't have to be hard it doesn't have to be too emotional it can be easy and it can be done so that's it for today's video i hope you found the information helpful and useful if you're new around here i'd love to have you stick around so make sure you are subscribed to my channel and that's it and hopefully i will see you in the next video bye guys about to leave Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking, we'll get away to a place where we don't know.